Geolocating images isn't always as easy as finding something like the Eiffel Tower in the background of a photo or the Statue of Liberty. But where it really matters is where there's no significant landmarks, except maybe something like a mountain. But mountains, cliffs, ranges and canyons are all unique creatures and they come in all shapes and sizes from curvy mountains, big mountains, sharp ones and steep ones. So when we're looking at videos and photos trying to figure out where they were taken, you can see that mountains in the background can be super useful. So let's have a look at a few tools that can help you get a little bit better at finding the location of a photo or a video that features one of nature's perfect landmarks, mountains. Hi everyone and welcome back to this series on how to do open source investigations from home. I'm Ben and this is part 13, so let's get started. I want to start this session off by taking you through the most useful tool any good open source investigator should learn, and that's Google Earth. And Google Earth provides a variety of features that are useful for us, but one compelling one for this session is the ability to view the Earth's surface in 3D. That's right, in full 3D view, just like what we're seeing here with these mountains in comparison to what a normal satellite image would show as just seeing them as flat. With Google Earth, we can view things in 3D such as houses, trees, buildings, and even bridges in 3D as well. But what we can also view is nature in 3D. For example, let's take a look at this view of the El Capitan in California. We can see the details of it. We can see how perfect some of these ridge lines are along here. We can even have a peek through some of these ridge lines and look just at how detailed they are. If you've been watching some of my previous videos I've created on geolocation, you might have seen me use some mountains before. For example, in the video Finding Modi, where we used mountain ranges to match up angles of where photos were taken in the valley. You might also have seen some work from myself and a number of other open source investigators for a BBC Africa Eye investigation where the geolocation of mountain ranges were part of the verification used to identify the location of a chilling execution in Cameroon. We can use the same thing here by showing, for example, the intense flooding in Sudan's Kasala region. So if we have a look at Kasala, just having a look at the normal satellite imagery, we can see that there must be some mountains there, but without that 3D view on, we don't get much at all. Let's have a look at that view if we pop on the terrain function here in Google Earth. And if we have a look at this video of the flooding in Kasala from 2019, where there was large flooding in Sudan, we can see signs of what appears to be steep mountains in the background. This helps us geolocate that footage so that perhaps we can narrow down this footage and see if we can identify exactly where that video might have been filmed from. Let's take a look at that place on Google Earth and see if we can find where those mountains might be and where some of these features and shapes that we see in this video might be as well. Sometimes, however, mountain ranges are not as well textured as we'd like. So while you might see sharp, jagged rocks like we have in the El Capitan here, Let's compare this against, say, this jagged mountain range in Yemen. Notice how the shaping on this mountain here, if we have a look at it from above, we can see that it's even causing shadows because it's so jagged and, and, and tall that it's causing these large shadows coming out of here. And yet, if we view it on the side, it looks completely flat and completely domed and rounded as well. Let's match these up together alongside what we can see of El Capitan. And you can see just the difference in some areas of the attention to detail on some of these mountain ranges and ridgelines. This texturing problem makes it difficult when we're trying to find specific ranges that fit for certain geolocations. A really good case on this was one that I worked on in 2021 
on this footage that we see of a wreckage site in Ethiopia. We can see the mountain range and I've geolocated that footage, but it doesn't seem to perfectly match with what we've got in the video as well. To fix this, we can use this really simple tool called Peak Visor, which is, allows us to identify mountain ranges really precisely, much more precisely than what we get sometimes on, for example, Google Earth. If we have a look at this location of where the footage was filmed from, we can see that these mountains are much more defined than what we have on Google Earth. And you can see that those features are very much different to what we have on the features that we can see on Google Earth here. Notice the difference on this ridge line along here in comparison to the ridge line in this one over on this side. Notice the difference between these two ridge lines that we're looking at and how we can see different bends in the mountains and different bumps and things like that. It makes a very much a different image. Both of them are similar to what we have in the footage, but the one from Peak Visor is much more of a stronger match, isn't it? This means Peak Visor gives us a more accurate view of the mountains in the background of the footage. And when we match that up, it really shows that proof of geolocation. So it just goes to show that when you're in doubt, searching for that extra level of verification always helps. I hope you enjoyed this session on geolocation using mountain ranges. If you did, please do leave a comment, give it a like, and share it with a friend or colleague that might find it useful as well. And I'll see you in the next session. But until then, keep searching.